All right, okay. realistic. Realistically speaking, and don't just lie to my subscribers, because I'm gonna have to actually put videos out if you don't. How much money are you trying to put in every or biweekly, or is that still what you want to do now that you know that we're gonna have to actually be doing this? Uh, I put in right now. Ooh, how much do I put in right now? What is going on, everyone? So for anyone that's new to investing or doesn't really have a clue on where to start, well, this is it. This is the place. I've got my little sister here. She's also brand new to investing, and while she's learning, so will you. You're going to be learning how to do research on a stock, and what better way to learn how to do that than by watching her and then watching me correct her. So this video is going to be about Fubo stock because I was going to cover Fubo stock today anyways in my video, but you know, my sister wanted to get in on the action. So we went ahead and let her in on it. Now, what you're going to be seeing in this video are clips from two different days. One of them was from today, but there was another one where we kind of speak in general about investing and she makes some important decisions that I kind of influence her on. So you're going to see the clip on that. It's not very long. And then we're going to get into Fubo and doing DD on Fubo. Well, what does DD mean? It means due diligence. DD just means that you're doing research on a stock. So as you saw in the thumbnail, you're going to learn how to do some research today. If you're brand new to investing or trading, whatever the case may be, you're not gonna wanna miss this video. So stick around because we're gonna be starting right now. Hey, what's going on? It's Pat from Top Ticker Trades. If you're new here and you wanna learn how to use stocks and options to make your portfolio go parabolic, make sure you start now by subscribing and tapping that bell so you never miss an upload. Okay, guys, all right. Bucks. She puts in like 60 bucks. Or no, yeah, is it 60 bi weekly? Or 30 bi weekly? We, and we 60 made, monthly. I don't know. And then I add extra every now and again when I can afford to. So, all right, here's the, here's the backstory because, hell, most of you aren't going to know that. None of you are going to know this. So, I've been trying to talk her into investing for a long time now. She really doesn't know about anything that I. She really just doesn't pay attention or she doesn't give a care. Hell, I don't know. Uh, she's so damn busy all the time. We're all busy. Hell, we got kids. I mean, what do you expect? But I think what she's putting in, and I don't know because I kind of set it up mm -hmm. to where it just automatically comes out and buys certain stocks. And my goal for her, and for the, some of you are going to catch on immediately if you know anything about stocks. Some of you won't know what the hell, why I'm doing this. But I started her off. Um, a while ago, we started with Clean Spark, set it up to where thirty dollars every single or biweekly comes out of her account and buys Clean Spark. Now this is this started when Clean Spark was like I don't know twelve bucks or something maybe, but uh, either she's gonna be really happy with me or really pissed off one day. But Clean Spark is what we started with. My goal was to get her to 100 shares and then possibly move on to another stock to kind of diversify her portfolio one day and have her have two stocks instead of just one. I think the last time I looked at it, she only had 19 shares in there. So it's been moving real slow. But what can you expect for, you know, 30 bucks biweekly? And I think, you know, well, how much money for 100? 100 a month? 100 shares. Or oh, 100 shares. Well. If you do the math, Clean Spark right now is like 20 bucks, which is dirt cheap for Clean Spark. Anybody that's been buying it knows that because that shit hit 40 freaking dollars. We've got a 50% discount right now because of all the manipulation in the stock market. Some of you may not believe it's manipulation, but trust me. It's manipulation, you little asses. <laughs> and if you're not buying Clean Spark at $19, which it only hit one time here recently, and then now it's like in 2021. Then you're getting you're screwing yourself, bro. Anyhow, and well, are you screwing yourself, sis? Here's what we're gonna do. You know, I still want to get a hundred shares. Maybe I can talk so her how into how much money? What's uh twenty times eighty? So some news came out recently, which may not be very good for Fubo TV stock. Now this news has to do with Google. It has to do with T-Mobile. In case you didn't know. 
T-Mobile had a service called T-Vision, which was essentially a streaming service, something along the lines of or comparable to AT&T TV. Well, this was announced, I believe, in late October of 2020 and was actually launched in early November. I believe it was actually November 1st of 2020. Right now, we're finding out that this service is going to be discontinued due to a partnership that T-Mobile recently agreed to enter into with Google. Why could this be or why would this be bad for Fubo TV? Motley Fool seems to think that there are some serious implications here which are not very good for Fubo TV. I'm not going to be explaining this to you because I've got someone here that would rather do that for me. Now, hear me out real quick, people. I've got my little sister here. What you guys don't know, basically creating a series for brand new investors, for beginners. And I'm starting by teaching my little sister how to invest. We're going to be taking a look at her portfolio in this series, which is going to take me quite some time. But I'm slowly introducing her to stocks. So what I had her do, I gave her a homework assignment. And when I saw this article about Fubo, which is a bear case, I haven't given her any of my thoughts. And the reason for that is this. I want you guys to pretty much see how a complete beginner, someone that doesn't have experience investing, someone that doesn't really know anything about investing, interprets information that's provided online because it lets us know how a lot of new investors are interpreting this information. So I think that would be very interesting. It's, it's pretty much a case study for us. So we're going to take advantage of it because we do have someone new here that's willing to work with us so that we can benefit from it. So I'm about to let my little sister get on here and explain to you what she found out essentially from reading an article. We're going to see how she interprets this article, what she thinks that it means, and how she would invest and what she would invest in based on reading this article. Now, I haven't told her much except for, you know, this video is going to be about Fubo. So that's really all she knows. I'm going to put her on, and then afterwards, I'm going to explain to you whether or not she is right or wrong, and I'm going to give you my take on the whole thing, so be sure to stick around for that. This is going to be very interesting. It does not matter if you're a beginner or if you're a seasoned investor, trader, whatever the case may be. You're going to want to hear about this. You're going to want to know what her point of view is. This is definitely a positive for us, so let's get her on here. Sandra, come on, take over. All right, guys. My name is Sandy. I read an article that my brother advised me to read, and it was about um, Fubo TV stock and T-Mobile. So I'm just going to kind of go over what I felt um, the opinion of the person that wrote it was. And to me, basically, the entire article was saying that T-Mobile with Google is going to be really bad for Fubo TV. And that was as of last week, the last week of March, um, during March Madness. So Google gives crazy discounts for um, YouTube TV now, and they're already a big competitor of Fubo TV. So now T-Mobile announced it's getting rid of T-Vision, and that's actually not a good thing. Um, you would think it's a good thing because it's knocking out one of the competitors, but we'll get to why that's not good later. So either way, all of this is bad news for Fubo TV. And why is it bad? It's because Google's got bank. They are throwing nice discounts to T-Mobile customers. So now T-Vision wasn't supposed to be bringing home the bacon. They were just meant to bundle the little piggies in a blanket. But guys, these discounts are sick. I'm not even trying to advertise for T-Mobile or for Google. I'm just here giving you the facts from the article that I read and they're bundling up with YouTube and, and just crazy discounts all over, like different bundles. So no more T-Vision. So T-Mobile has a competitive 5G network technology. So if you're not really sure what this 5G stuff is, watching the commercials, basically it's giving you a faster data connection for anyone that has the 5G network. So again, all of this is bad for Fubo TV. 
So goodbye sports first, streaming bundle, too much competition. So back to why shutting down T-Vision is actually not so helpful for Fubo. T-Vision is being replaced with YouTube. So basically they're getting, they didn't get that many, uh, that much profit from having T-Vision. So they got rid of it and now they're going to bundle it with YouTube, which they're offering again, crazy discounts, just even bundle with that. Um, they are also, uh, so Fubo TV is already behind with subscribers in comparison to T-Mobile. All right. So T-Mobile, you got to think is up there above Fubo TV. So that's already against them. And YouTube is actually also above Fubo TV. So another comp competitor against them. So bundle them together. What do you have? A big, big, giant competition match, and they're not going to win. So Fubo TV is kind of getting sucked down the drain right now. <laughs> so you got to think, if T-Mobile is shutting down only after six months of their uh, T-Vision, whatever their little program was that obviously I can't even recall because it sucked, then how the hell does Fubo TV even have a chance? Okay. Six months, that's not a long time. So here's the thing. Should you invest in T-Mobile? You probably think, oh yeah, this girl's like really talking good about, hell no, don't invest. Don't invest in T-Mobile. According to this article, the legendary investors, Motley Fool and co-founders David and Tom Gardner, they came up with this list of the top 10 best stocks to buy. And guess who didn't make the cut? Other than Fubo TV, guess who didn't make the cut? T-Mobile. What? Are you serious right now? Yeah, T-Mobile did not make the top ten cut. Mm. So yeah, these investors like have investors. about twenty years' experience, guys, and they're legendary. They outperformed the stock market by one, two, three, four times. Outperformed the stock market by four times. So yeah, these guys know what's up. I would check out those 10 stocks if I were you, but again, T-Mobile's not one of them, so don't invest in them. And that's all I have to say, according to what the article read. Okay, well, what's your impression of the article? I mean, is the uh, author reputable? I mean, reading that... It's just what, an opinion. Okay, but reading that, I mean, do you trust this uh, author? Like, would you make an, an investment decision based off of what this guy is saying? The no. author is saying? Why not? Because I'd want to do more research. Where would you do research at? Google. <laughs> the to competitor more, of Fubo. <laughs> to find more articles just like this. <laughs> yeah. See? Doesn't that make sense? Isn't it like a scheme? They're making you... I would use maybe GoDaddy or DuckDuckGo or whatever it's called. Okay. Sandra, GoDaddy is like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. GoDaddy. I almost worked there, guys, but I didn't take the job. Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you could just say uh, a... Uh, Any search engine other than Google. Engine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, guys, also, T-Mobile is offering this package deal with Netflix, too. So they're totally going to get, like, Fubo TV is going to be Fubo out. It's going to be out. Was that in the article, or you just come up with that yourself? No, the net Netflix thing, for real, was in, in the article. But, I mean, you said Fubo out. Yeah, like... You came up with that? Yeah, I just own? came up with that. Holy cow, folks. You see why I, why I put her on? I mean, she's very creative. Wow, I'm a bear. She's a bear. So I just had to explain to her what bear <laughs> and bull meant. She was like, oh, a bear. Okay. Uh. All right. So I don't know what she told you guys about this article, but I think I have an idea. So first of all, she mentioned Tom Gardner and the Motley Fool. That's uh, the reason why he's called a fool, right? I, I don't know. I don't know nothing about him. I'm, so, all right. It's a gimmick. Here's the thing. We're not subscribed. I'm not subscribed to the Motley Fool Alerts or whatever their services are. But I do know that the Motley Fool did, uh, I don't know what their alerts are called. If it's like a double down alert or whatever it's called. Fubo was on there. Okay. So this was several months ago. Uh, Fubo was on there and they were telling everybody, or I guess put out a recommendation for people to buy Fubo. And um, so you may be thinking, well, 
my sister just talked about some article put out by the motley fool and as a matter of fact you should be able to see it on your screen right now this is it this article um it's written by billy duberstein and um you're probably wondering well you know if if uh definitely a bear well yeah it's billy Bearstein. Oh my God, Billy the Bearstein, Bearstein the Dubber Bear. Bearstein. But anyhow, so you guys are probably sitting there thinking, okay, well, if Motley Fool off or issued this double down buy alert, and again, I don't know what it's really called, whatever the hell they call it, then why are they putting out articles like this? Well, this is where you need to, um, you know, check your sources and know that all of these little companies on the internet. What they do is have independent writers, okay? Independent authors get on here and write articles. So what this dude is saying may not necessarily represent what uh, Tom Gardner and Motley Fool actually think or believe. So that's one thing. My sister didn't know that, and I wasn't going to tell her that before we started making the video because it wouldn't be as much like fun. what they say? About what? What did he say? He didn't say anything, but what I was did saying. He say that he said? I was saying that Billy Dubber Bearstein. The big this, guy is he the same one I just read the article on? He's an ind- He's the one that wrote this article that you just reported on, and he is an independent writer for uh, the Google. Motley Fool. Oh. No, so look, all these companies that put oh, out these articles. Oh, they do that on purpose for competition to make it. I, I can explain that. Well, they do that because it's they... It's just like hotels. They have the competition for a reason because it ups both sales. But then you got to be one step above them to get higher sales and marketing. I don't know so nothing about good. that. Good, bad press is good press. Well, no, I don't think they even like read these articles. They just let these little suckers write the crap on yeah, there. I mean, unless it's like something funny. really crazy. But basically, they just want articles, you know, to come from their website, and it, it all has to do. This is a lesson that has to do with internet marketing, and has nothing to do with stocks. But I feel like I have to explain it now, because it kind of does relate to stocks. If you're someone that's brand new and you're researching and doing your DD, this is what you need to be aware of. Okay, uh, keywords, internet marketing, you know how sites are promoted within the Google search engine or whatever search engine that you want to be found on or ranked on so in order for these websites to get ranked and motleyfool.com is obviously a website they have to constantly come up with brand new content and this content has to be keyword rich but it can't it can't be like to where you're keyword stuffing and it's very hard for me to try to explain to you what all this crap Basically, means. Basically, it was written like someone was trying to use synonyms on a special app, Grammarly.com or some crap. That's has, how I read it. It has to sound kind of natural, at least. It didn't sound educated. Well, whatever. It has. It's supposed to sound natural. I mean, you know, Google yeah. uses an algorithm. It, it keeps getting better and better and better. But it has to have like a natural flow to it. But it still wants... It still needs to use specific keywords. These keywords have to be related to stocks. And, you know, Fubo, sto- Fubo stock could be a keyword. Uh, stocks is a keyword. You know, whatever. You know, these are just examples. Basically, they just want relate keywords related to whatever the website is about, you know, in general. And that's how they get ranked in the search engine. And, you know, ultimately, they're just trying to be found by as many people as possible. So they're going to have, I guess, pretty low standards as far as, you know, who can uh, publish articles on there. I mean, they're not going to let just anybody publish, but you don't have to have many qualifications in order to be able to publish. Now, this is just what I'm assuming based on... uh, what I know about internet marketing and what I see, um, or articles that I've read, like just kind of, kind of the impression that, uh, un- the impression that I'm under basically, I guess is it's, that's the easiest way for me to put this. Sorry, I'm getting a little tongue tied here. Anyhow, this all has to do with, um, search engine optimization, internet marketing, all that kind of good stuff. You really, 
don't need to understand the entire process. All you have to understand is that when you're seeing stuff on the internet, you have to make sure that whatever article you're reading is uh, credible, it's coming from a credible source. And just because you see a credible name behind it doesn't always or doesn't necessarily mean that the uh, doesn't necessarily mean that the information is credible because these uh, websites have uh, independent authors. So you do have to know that sometimes you can look for disclaimers on the page or whatnot or maybe do some research on the actual website itself and see you know what criteria these authors have to meet in order to be able to publish to the actual website. So anyhow, be aware of that. That's one thing you need to know. And now we're going to talk more about this entire, you know, Fubo TV deal and uh, this deal with Google and T-Mobile and how it, how it's negative for Fubo TV. So the first thing I need to say is, uh, foolish sister, don't you know my channel loves Fubo and we're all Fubo investors here? Haven't you looked at my stock portfolio, my long term? It's full of Fubo stock. And when you insult Fubo, you insult top ticker trades. So now it, you, out. Now you must pay. Okay? She even coined a term which is Fubo out. Fubo. That's bull spit! Who's out it? So here's the deal, okay? So first of all, it's uh we're gonna now we're talking about the actual topic at hand. Alright, it's hard for most companies to be profitable in the streaming space, guys. And notice I didn't say all companies, I said some. And it's an extremely tough space to compete in. And according to some industry experts, a lot of the players in, these, in this space aren't relying on streaming revenue as the main source for the company's revenue or income. This is exactly the case in this article that's being described in this article with T-Mobile and their launch of T-Vision. And... As the article says, T-Vision wasn't really created to be a money maker for T-Mobile. It was simply a way for the company to bundle wireless phone plans today and potentially 5G home broadband in the future. Or at least that's what the article says. So what I think that this article is trying to allude to, and uh, it's comprised mainly of two points, okay, that I'm going to touch on. And these points are that, you know, one... If a company like T-Mobile isn't able to successfully run a streaming service, how is a small company like Fubo TV going to successfully and profitably be able to do this the same thing that this big ass company wasn't able to accomplish? You know, how are they going to how is Fubo TV going to manage this? So, whereas the inexperienced investor, someone that lacks the knowledge pertaining to how this industry actually functions. The newcomer may be under the impression that T-Mobile's discontinuation of T-Vision on the surface would appear to be good news for Fubo, as it would imply that there is less competition. Pretty much another one hits the dust, so to speak. But the second point here is that YouTube TV is already a very strong com competitor in this space. And through this partnership, you know, the Google T-Mobile partnership, this will only strengthen a very strong and dominant player in, in this space, which will make it a lot harder for a competitor like Fubo to pretty much, you know, gain an upper hand. Like, how, how, are, how is Fubo TV going to compete against someone like YouTube or, or a company like YouTube TV, especially with this partnership with T-Mobile now, uh, I, mean, I mean, it's going to be tough, right? That's what this article is saying. Well, I say screw this article. And let me explain to you why. First of all, I told you that with this guy, Billy Dubberstein, he's just some independent author. You can't actually listen to what he's saying. We don't even know if he is credible. We don't know what he knows. So you can't listen to any of that Number two, here's the thing with Fubo. Fubo isn't just a streaming platform, okay? Fubo is so much more than that. It is a sports-first streaming platform, but you don't just go there for the sports. Or but Yeah, you do go there for the sports, I'm sorry. But you stay for the family entertainment. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. They have some little slogan there that they use. 
I think I came close enough, but here's the deal. It's not just a streaming platform. It is now also a wagering company. They're at least trying to get the wagering side of things set up. It will be set up by Q3 or Q4 of this year. So that's a serious differentiation from these streaming companies, okay, like YouTube TV. And if you've watched my video from yesterday, you're already going to know some of these facts. I'm pretty much reciting them from memory, but I, I think I'm going to be pretty close here. So Fubo, they have uh, they do all their programming in-house, first of all, okay? So they've got an advantage over the competition, and they they pretty much offer a, a uh, seamless interaction between the streaming side of things and also the wagering side of things. So you're able to be watching a game, or a live event rather, and be able to place a bet, or a wager, you know, like instantly, like bam, like right then and there, as you're watching the event unfold. Okay, so that's one side of things. That's pretty uh, innovative if you ask me. So far, I, I do not know of any other company that can do this. Now in yesterday's video, I did tell you about uh, DraftKings partnering with Dish. They're trying to do something very similar to what Fubo is doing. And by that, I mean that they're bringing a media company in with a sports betting company. But as far as, you know, the seamless interaction or the seamless customer experience, I don't know if that's ever going to be there. I'm sure that's going to be their goal. It does validate the technology, just, you know, Fubo's technology, you know, what Fubo's trying to do, just as I said yesterday in yesterday's video. But here's the deal. So Fubo's bringing sports betting into uh, or into the mix along with the entire sports first platform. So they've already got a lot of subscribers. Um, I mean, if you compare them to other big services, it may not be a lot of subscribers, but they're steady growing at a you know pretty consistent rate. Um, if you look at their earnings, I know that the last, during the last earnings call, there may have been some concern for investors because of the EPS, negative EPS, uh, you know, came in much worse than expected. That was due to some write downs, okay? Um, go back and watch my video from yesterday because I, I explain all that in detail. So all I really want to say to you in this video is pretty much don't be concerned about that. It's not as serious as other people are making it out to be. And I think even in this article and Hell, I read this like a couple of days ago, so I don't remember all the details, but I'm pretty sure that this Billy Duberstein was saying something about their earnings, and, uh, you know, he just needs to chill out, because obviously he hasn't done his DD, bruh, like, like I have, like my sister here. Anyhow, you have to do your own DD. You have to get into the company's financial statements. You have to read that 10K Read everything you possibly can because that is how you educate yourself. It doesn't necessarily have to compete with the uh, streaming service that YouTube TV is bringing here. So out of all of the Fubo subscribers, which is somewhere in the in the range of like 700,000 right now, which is significantly smaller than YouTube TV, yes, but like I said earlier, it's consistently growing each quarter uh, and expected to grow... <laughs> significantly um, within the current quarter that we're in right now. What what we found out through Fubo's proprietary technology, which basically allows them to uh, survey their customers or their, their subscriber base, is that 96% of their subscriber base is watching sports. And out of this 96%, I believe 22% did say when when they were surveyed that they were willing to spend a hundred dollars per month which is quite a bit of money when you're looking at how much the actual streaming service itself costs but they're willing to spend a hundred dollars a month uh, to use fubo's sportsbook when fubo's sportsbook actually does launch i'm sure these numbers will grow um i really look at fubo and, and compare them to like a Robin Hood. And that may sound kind of weird as I'm saying it right now because I haven't explained to you why I look at them like that. But to me, Robin Hood pretty much opened the doors 
for all uh, for a lot of retail investors and enabled them to be able to p- just pick up your cell phone and buy some stocks and invest, okay? Uh, if it wasn't for Robinhood, we wouldn't have nearly the number of investors that we're seeing right now. I mean, it's, the number is insane, okay? Numbers don't lie, and the number of investors, new investors, new users, is just completely insane, okay? Not only did Robinhood enable all these new people to go in here and invest, but also Robinhood made it to where every other platform had to essentially stop charging you commissions and trading fees, you know, or at least most platforms had to do that in order to compete with Robinhood. So Robinhood was pretty much like the gateway into investing, okay? Well, I look at Fubo in a similar manner, I guess. They're kind of doing the same thing here. They're taking all these users that, these sports fans, these people that are subscribing to them to watch sports, and they're going to flip them and turn them into people that are going to do sports betting. Now, there's two acquisitions that we need to talk about. So Fubo, within the last few months or a couple months, made two strategic acquisitions. One of these companies was Victory. The other company was Balto. Now, one of these offers like the free-to-play services, and Fubo's not really expecting to make money from the free-to-play. That's kind of more of their way to um, to acquire customers, okay? To bring new customers in, to participate in the services that are going to yield uh, profit later on down the road. The other service is what's allowing Fubo to bring the sports book to the platform. There's an advantage here that Fubo has over the likes of DraftKings and companies like that that are trying to, to pretty much copy Fubo right now. Essentially, they are the ones, DraftKings are the ones with the regulation issues because Fubo owns both of the platforms, both sides of things. So they're, uh, and they are regulated right now, which means that they have more flexibility, which means that they're able to offer the sports betting on on their streaming platform, whereas DraftKings isn't able to do that yet. The regulations that I mentioned a second ago have to do with sharing sensitive customer data uh, between companies or between apps. So seeing as how DraftKings and Dish are partnering for to offer a similar service, you know, there, there's going to be regulation issues there, some hurdles that they need to pretty much overcome before they can do what Fubo is doing. Then on top of that, there's issues of implementing it all and putting it all on one platform. Is that even going to be possible? Another thing that we do know, and I know this because I'm covering, or in the past I did cover some other companies that are related to the iGaming industry. Um, one of them would be GNOG, okay, G-N-O-G, Golden Nugget Online Gaming. When uh, What I know from covering all these different sports betting companies is that these states are making a crap load of money from these companies, from what these companies are doing. So whenever legislation starts changing, and it's coming, I mean, it's it's happening state by state very slowly, uh, I believe the number, what ARK Invest, I guess, estimated was that about 35 states would have legalized online gambling by 2030. I mean, that's coming up pretty quick, guys. You know, that's not far away. And, you know, notice I said by 2030. So that means a lot of states are going to be starting to pass this very quickly here. When that starts taking place, you're going to see companies like Fubo really benefiting from this. You're going to see companies like DraftKings benefiting from this and Golden Nugget Online Gaming. The space is huge, so you know don't get fooled. This is a huge industry. It's not a zero-sum game. You're going to have a lot of players here that are able to you know take advantage of the changes that are coming. Fubo is definitely going to be one of them, in my opinion. I'm not not worried at all about what this uh, author is saying. You know, no, no disrespect to him. He's entitled to his own opinion. I'm just saying that my opinion is different. I'm very bullish on Fubo TV. You know, while articles like this may have beginners 
staying away from the stock, selling it, you know, whatever. You know, I hope the stock goes down because then I'll just buy more shares, okay? I mean, I want it to come down. I like to buy shit when it's cheap. I like to buy it even more when it's dirt cheap. I want to see it come down so I can really capitalize on the opportunity there and buy as many freaking shares as I possibly can. All right, Sandra, did you learn anything from what I just told everybody? No. Did you, like, do you wish you would have, like, I would have told you all this before you started speaking? Yes. All right, are you busy texting somebody or do you think you get We're off? making, I'm in the process of making an educational series about investing for beginners. And we're basing this off of what I'm teaching her. Um, now, look, before you judge her or before you judge my teaching ability, this is like literally the second time I've like messed with her on stocks, so that's why her knowledge is insignificant right now, but she's getting better every single day. She's just not, you know, she doesn't come over here a lot, so I don't get to see her and like teach her crap a whole lot, but when she does, I do. Either way, I'm still managing her portfolio, which you guys will get to see, but I will show you guys how I manage her long term on a rather, well, meager investment because we know that... A lot of people aren't rich and they're not going to be able to just put in whatever. She has a, you know, decent, hmm, what would you, how would you describe your salary? <laughs> it's not decent. It's a teacher salary. Okay. She's a teacher. I wasn't going to embarrass uh... her on here because I'm teaching the teacher, but here's the deal. So she's a teacher. So you know about how much teachers make. So you know about how much a single mom teacher chick can invest in the stock market and, you know, I'm taking that and I'm going to turn it into millions. Anyhow, you guys are going to get to see this. You know, it's not always going to be just buying stocks. I'm going to be deploying certain option strategies to really maximize her uh, uh, contributions here into her portfolio. So I'm going to show you exactly how to take a small account and grow it into something that's like a behemoth. Okay. Give them a little bit more details about this whole so not to talk your ear off like he did. Uh, the long and short of it is that if you have no experience with stocks, if you don't know anything about stocks, this channel will be just for you guys and you'll learn with me and it'll be so much fun. No, but really it'll be a good um, opportunity for anyone that wants to learn about how to invest in stocks and how to make money for yourself want to invest not only in stocks but into your future and that's it that's all i gotta say all right cool so uh yeah you guys are going to learn with her she started at the bottom she has no knowledge started from the bottom now we're here now we're here now she's going to try to get here you have to tell them why they need to smash the subscribe because button. you want to follow me on this new channel. channel eventually so like you know eventually know that's gonna happen yeah you're eventually gonna like put this on your channel like put the put those do you ever ask them to put any uh Comments in the post? No, because all I have to do to do that is make a video about MVIS and talk shit about okay, it. Okay, well, and, I want to get to know these and I'll get viewers. Like 300 negative. Post a comment if you have a question as a newbie that you want me to ask. And I'll look it over and I'll pick. Because I have tons of questions I can ask. I was trying to talk to one of my friends the other day. Actually, she's like, girl, I don't know anything about stocks. And I was talking to her about dividends and how mine went up. Wait, why did, why did you ask? Why did you ask about? Because I was you checking. About I was checking my little stock app. What's my, your little stock app? What's what what is it? Webull and Robinhood. Oh, okay. And I had a dividend that went up by fourteen percent, and so I was like, "Woohoo!" But I was being sarcastic, because it was only like ten Wait, you mean cents. You, you, what do you mean by four, your dividend went up? By I don't four? see. That's exactly it. I don't know. But I was asking her if she knew some stuff about it. She knew absolutely nothing of nothing. Most people she don't. She didn't even know dividend was a thing in relation to stocks. So that's my point. So you guys can learn with me. We'll break it down. If you have a question, put it in the comments. And maybe we'll get to answer it the next time. Well, actually, that you know what? If you guys do put a bunch of uh, questions in the comment section, I'll answer them for the next video and I can do that pretty quickly. Um, but before we get out of here, which we will soon, I promise, for all the very brand new people that are watching this that do not know what a dividend stock is, okay? I'm gonna ask my sister if she knows because I'm not sure if she even knows. Do you know what a dividend stock is? 
No, but isn't it something where once you buy a certain number of stocks, you can uh, you have your shares, and then you have something else you can buy and sell no. to get more money? No, 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 no. I have no idea. All right, so here's <laughs> the thing, and I mean, it's just all, there's so many I different ways. I just know ways. it's a term that y'all use in stocks. There's so many different ways to invest, so many different strategies, so many different things that you can do. It all just depends on, you know, what what you want to do. Okay, so dividend stocks in general are not going to be as volatile, meaning they're not going to move up or down as much as other stocks. You know, for example, a growth stock, you're expecting a ton of growth. So these would be like your, you know, for example, tech stocks. You're going to expect those to pretty much hit the moon you know they better be growing a lot and it's because the company's making a lot of money and it's not paying anything to its shareholders as far as dividends so dividends would be a distribution of the wealth okay a distribution of some of the profits that the company's making each quarter now it's not just on a quarterly basis some stocks pay dividends on uh, a monthly basis it just depends on which stock but the most common outs occur on a quarterly basis. Then you have so what your uh, what is that called? Your retirement plan, basically. You can well, not stocks. I mean, well, yeah, it could be part of your retirement plan. You're basically uh, living off of so. But you got to think the people don't know what this stuff is. So you're like throwing out words and just definitions, textbook definitions. So the stuff that I just said, like when I tried to in explain one year it, and only I heard so divide. You didn't, you didn't know. Like, they don't comprehend what he's saying, right, guys? So. Put something in the comments if you're like me, but if you don't know anything about stocks, that's the whole point. So we're going to have a channel to go over that and learn it. And I will supervise. Of course. And until then, if you need to know what you should be investing in, and I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just somebody's brother. Fubo TV. Yeah. Um, I do DD, which means due diligence, which means I investigate companies. I look into their financials. I look into the opportunity that that company has and I make a decision based off of that and other factors on how that specific company will fare against its competitors, at which point is, you know, how I make a decision about whether or not the stock or the company's stock is the buy. And, uh, you know, pretty much I make videos about that, you know, like every day. So that's what you guys need to be on the lookout for. I'm going to make a separate playlist for the beginner series uh, until we get the actual like beginner's course out, which I'm working on that kind of slow right now because I'm trying to include every little detail and be able to explain it in layman's terms for like the true beginners that really don't understand. Uh, so I'm taking my time with that. Ding! <laughs> yeah, taking my time with that, and that's why I've, I've recruited my sister because she doesn't know anything about stocks. So that I could, uh, so that I can understand how your mind works, okay, and and explain things in a way that you're gonna understand. Because if she doesn't understand, I know darn well you're not gonna be able to understand. So that's kind of how we're setting all of this up. <laughs> so if I do understand, you guys, you're in luck. Yeah, if she understands, more than likely, <laughs> the if rest you're of the a beginner, population you're gonna understand. will understand. Yes. Right, right, right. An eight-year-old could do this. True that. True that. My son knows more about stocks and he's 10. I've actually tried to teach him. Because he talks his ear off about stocks all the time. Gavin? You do. That's what he, he always talks about stocks. What does he with say? Me. I don't even know half the words coming out of his mouth. Because you know, he already has an extensive vocabulary. So whenever he talks about stocks, he goes, oh, did you know that something, something about investing, da, 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 and if you do this? No, I had no idea what you're even talking about. So he gets this from listening to me? Yes. Has he been watching my YouTube videos? He sits next to you when you record sometimes, and he'll listen in, and then you talk to him in the car about stocks. Holy cow, man. So he literally knows over, you know, maybe 20, 30, 40 times that y'all have talked <laughs> so much about stocks compared to this is the second conversation we had. Holy cow. Yeah. Okay. I, I see. Okay. Cool. That makes but sense. But he understands more about the concepts. My 10-year-old does because he's... Beyond a dozen, two dozen times, talked to my brother. Literally had a conversation about it after he heard him over a dozen times. So, yeah, that helps. Well, I try to tell these uh, young kids and you know get them ready. Heck, I mean, I wish I would have known all this stuff when I was like eight or ten. 
I would have been like super rich right now. I was freaking about freaking out about balancing a checkbook when I was younger. Golly. I remember that gave me the most anxiety when I was ten. Well. Double digits. Yes. So smash that subscribe button. Well, first you gotta hit the like button. First they need to smash the like button because if you don't then uh, we're never going to make another video again because we're going to know you don't like this. And uh, then if you're not part of our wonderful, wonderful family yet, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and uh, turn it whatever color it's supposed to turn. Make sure you tap that bell if you want to keep receiving notifications every time I drop a vid because I know that uh, you're going to want to or something like that. I might be on the next one. She might be, hey, uh, these, yeah, never mind. Depends on you guys. So hit the like, hit the subscribe. Matter of fact, listen, here's the deal. I'm going to have her start her YouTube channel tonight. She's going to make an extremely short video, and it's going to be called Why I Started Investing. Be on the lookout for that. I'm going to put it in the in my description, a link to it in my description. I want everybody that's on here right now listening to go ahead, go to her channel, and uh, sub right now. What if we did a shout out to one fan? We can do that. All right, so guys, we gotta get out of here because she's about to start her channel right now. I'm gonna do all the graphics I... and all that, so you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is record. I can your do first graphics. Video. I'm a virtual teacher. So uh, she's gonna make her very first video. Just it's gonna be like an intro video. Check that out. Like it even if you don't. Or uh, yeah. Whatever. I'm also the baby sister, so. Yeah, she's only seven. Give me extra likes. Yeah, my Because my brother always gets all the likes. My other sister, she's like 19. My other sister after that, she's like 37. He's lying. My other sister after that, I don't even know her. <laughs> There's only one of me. <laughs> oh, shoot. While I have you here, I wanted to quickly tell you about the brand new First Trade app, available for mobile or PC. The platform will give you access to powerful and easy to use tools, and allows you to trade with less restrictions, zero commissions, zero fees, and you can use the first link in the description below to download a free stock today without having to deposit any money. This will greatly help out the channel, and is always appreciated. And now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Congrats, ladies and gentlemen, you've made it to the end of the video. If you like what you watched, make sure you subscribe, because I put out videos just like this one every single day. And please do me a favor and smash that like button if I helped you in any way because it really goes a long way in helping the channel out and keeps me motivated to make videos every single day. Now there's a lot of work involved, a lot of research, and a lot of time and effort into editing and putting these out daily for you guys. You can subscribe from your screen right now. Or if you want to watch one of my other videos, I'm sure YouTube has some good content picked out for you on the left-hand side of your screen now. Thanks for sticking it out with me till the end, and I will see you guys in the next video.